Buongiorno mondo, and welcome back to 15 with Fosca, the podcast. Stay right where you are for the second part of my conversation with writer Amy Love Tommaso, dedicated to the life and work of iconic artist Francesca Woodman, and the many ways the time she spent in Italy shaped and formed her aesthetic, her photography, and her very being. Grazie mille e buon ascolto. Yeah. And is there something about, you've obviously studied her work very closely, you just talked about the fact that you, the way you envision the book is, is, a, is a, you know, her narrative, her voice, mm-hmm. um, in terms of, you know, what's, what's happening in the photo, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is there, are there, what are those, those differences that you see between the work that she did maybe in New York in those, you know, final mm-hmm. moments mm-hmm. of her life or maybe her earlier, her pre-Rome year work, and then mm. the work that she produced either while she was in mm-hmm. Italy or post-Italy. What, how do you see yeah. that change in her? What is it about Italy mm-hmm. that, that, um, that comes out in, mm-hmm. in, those, in those portraits, those self-portraits, whatever, the, mm-hmm. the, the photographs? Yes. Francesca's Italian work um, is very rooted in the, the classical art of Italy. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's very statuesque at times, um, meaning she looks like this, you know, a, yeah. a Roman statue. Mm. Um, it really plays on um, the that time period in Italy where it's both yeah. the kind of, she's often seen in these sort of decrepit, old factories and buildings, but mm. then juxtaposed with the freshness, you know, right. of, of her use of light and space. Um, and, and often she's, you know, in museums. Um, Italy, I think she, she really honed in on her use of patterns mm. of, um, of metaphorical imagery. She was fascinated with the Victorian time period mm. And so in Italy, you see a lot of these metaphors of that time, like mm-hmm. gloves are one mm-hmm. that come up a lot. Um, and so she started to create these series in Italy where she would play on a theme over an extended period of time. Okay. Sometimes it was based on allegories and she loved the Apollo and Daphne metamorphosis. Mm. You know, so we're seeing these classical themes woven in and out. In New York, um, she was starting to experiment with more mixed media. She was also experimenting with fashion photography as a Mm -hmm. way to make a living. So there's both experimentation in New York, but there's um, a kind of a diversion away from, you know, these, these very, like, very carefully planned and executed photos Hmm. from Rome. Yeah. I'm thinking about things historically, and Mm. I'm thinking, for example, the fact that she went to RISD, she was there around the time, like, the talking heads were there. I'm just Mm. thinking about, like, Mm. you know, where we were historically, and I'm thinking about coming to New York after that formative Mm. time in Italy, right? And you were talking about the Daphne and Apollo fixation, and, of course, you're talking, Mm -hmm. I think you're talking about the Bernini statue, at um, the f- at the um, okay. Galleria yeah. Borghese and God, I mean, it's one of the most. I the first time I saw it, I think I cried. I did right? Too. Did you cry? I, I cried. <laughs> it's just it's it's. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. it's it's incredible. And so I think that maybe also there's something really poignant in that. So she was doing these mm-hmm. close studies of all that you know Italy, all that beauty, my mm-hmm. God, all that beauty, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's so interesting to think about her work um, taking on those sort of, I love that idea of her, her artistic vision being mm-hmm. sort of informed by those spaces that she was in. And then, you know, her mm-hmm. New York work mm-hmm. becomes, you know, she was here in what, the like the late 70s? 80, 80 early 80s. I mean, yeah. if you think about what was going on here, it's crazy. I mean, it's right. really interesting. Right. You know, Italy was was experiencing all of this political s- strife, all mm-hmm. of this crazy stuff was going on. You know, yeah, and the piombo and all of the political uprisings and stuff. And then, you know, New York, there was it was the post, it was the punk. You know, the mm-hmm. punk movement was was here. You know, CBGs, all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You were saying she was. It was it was like a really that must have been a culture shock for her too, right? <laughs> like thinking, you know, she was yeah. young. She was so young. You know, there it's true, and there's some amazing, you know, retellings by some of her friends from that time in New York that 
Francesca kind of she she was so funny too. She would kind of stick up her nose at high culture and thought it was hoity toity mm-hmm. and loved to, you know, just be aware of pop art and mm-hmm. and really didn't put herself in this box. Like yes, she was a genius artist, but she was certainly not, you know, overly serious mm-hmm. about art. Um, and she would go to, you know, a diner with her best friend here in New York and they would just drink coffee and laugh about, you know, pop culture and music. And so she was keenly aware of what was happening around her, obviously, and she was deeply inspired by the surrealist movement mm-hmm. and and contemporary, you know, photographers, of course. Uh, but she was almost living in a different world in some ways, too. Mm-hmm. I think if, you know... You see pictures of Francesca, she would wear these long dresses and, um, like, ruffles, and right. she often would travel with, like, a valise, yeah. like, a, like yeah. a suitcase. Yeah. Um, again, it's, like, 1980. Right. Um, Which is was, crazy to think right. of. I mean, it, I know you weren't mm-hmm. born, but I, I was aware of <laughs> what things looked like in 1981, and, you know, right. I've seen the pictures of her, mm-hmm. and, yeah, it's like that, I don't know, if the, maybe she's so puzzling and so mysterious and mm-hmm. so... I don't know, inspiring because she was so right. mysteriously contradictory. Exactly. Or, she know. was her own. Yeah. Her own. And she was unique. Exactly. Um, and and she knew, from what I, I've i gathered, she knew she was a rock star. Yeah. You know, from her time when she took her first photo at 13 and onwards. And yeah. she got, arrived at RISD and, and her colleagues and classmates said you know she was already the best wow so it's kind of chilling to think but that so I just so I'm curious Mm. her you you talk about this best friend in New York Mm -hmm. you know and they would have these you know long talks over coffee at diners typical you know New York experience etc when when she plummeted to her death Mm -hmm. because I mean she killed herself by throwing herself out of a window I mean that's bad I mean that's really that's that's really intense okay so I mean the people who were close to her at the time Mm -hmm. I mean all they said was we let our guard down or I mean did anyone say that like what or did anyone talk about it Mm -hmm. in a more I don't know in a more real way Mm -hmm. or was it just too taboo even then I don't know yeah I again I I haven't spoken with her family about this so this is Mm -hmm. so much of what I've um, learned from, from Giuseppe, her friends yeah. in Italy. Um, I know for a while she lived with her mother around that time. She, um, it had kind of sunk into a depth and, and yet we received these interesting little details still like, yes, she was recovering, but she was reading Proust <laughs> at the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's like always these, this delicate balance up and down, but it was fairly shocking for Giuseppe and her friends in Italy he still cries and it gets very emotional to speak of Francesca's death. Um, it was, right, it was just unbelievable yeah. to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it it's really interesting because I can't help but wonder, would she be as famous, of course, right, if she hadn't died in that way and that young? Um and also at that time. At that time. At that time in history, right. you know? Right. And perhaps not. I have, I have no doubt she would still have been famous. Yeah. Um, and so what we're left with is, like, write these pieces of this story and what to make of it. Um, and there is a mystery there. You know, why did, why did she do it? And those are questions that compel me. I think myself as a young artist um, and... I have so much respect for the way Francesca was so committed to her art. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, at the same time, right before her death, there were signs, like she stopped taking photos. Mm -hmm. Um, She would write, she wrote some interesting reflections in her journal on Mm -hmm. past tense, almost like describing, you know, her work, like it was this and Mm -hmm. that. And she did write as well, something like it's better to you know die young and be remembered for what you've done at mm-hmm. in this quote but um so there are these pieces we we can kind of pick up in retrospect mm-hmm. um 
but I still just keep coming back to, you know, who was she? <laughs> right. Yeah. Who, who was, was who she? Who was the girl? Who was who was the girl? Um. So what? What do you hope to do with this book? I mean, mm-hmm. you want this is ambitious. You're mm-hmm. not, you know, you're you're trying to make sense of somebody who ultimately might have even just been ill-fitted to this world, like mm-hmm. a lot of artists mm-hmm. are, like a lot of very sensitive people are. Um, but what what would make you happy? Mm-hmm. How can justice be served mm-hmm. when it comes to Francesca mm-hmm. and her legacy and her voice? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's sort of both, there's an interior and an exterior hope. So um, for Francesca, of course, I I hope to tell her story. I hope to get to the truth, which is itself its own process. And I won't know I'm there until I'm deep, deep, deep down, (laughs) you know. And I think I'll one day hope to just say that has the ring of truth to who she was, you know. Um, And it... For yeah, because as I've said so many times, I mean, it just it feels like an obligation. It's like the story landed in my lap. I I walked into this bookstore and I heard the story. I don't know how this happened, but something about it has has grabbed me and said, mm-hmm. "You have to do this." Um, for Francesca, but also for myself, because um, I think through the process of of intimately knowing her story and writing about her. You know, it's a guide for my own journey as Absolutely. an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you balance again? Like I'm saying, if you as you do have to touch these deep emotions <laughs> to be able to convey them through through fo- photos, through writing, sure. whatever the medium is. Um, but you know, how do you keep going and face rejection and disappointment mm-hmm. um, and be strong through that? And so, really. You know, I write this for myself, too. I'm 29 now, um, and nowhere near as talented as Francesca was at, you know, her eight, her younger age, but also I feel really close to her. Yeah. Um, and to her project in life mm-hmm. of, of being an artist. Yeah. Um, you know, I've taken a path where I, you know, don't always let myself fully be in the art because it's scary. Mm-hmm. It scares me. Of course it is. <laughs> it is scary, yeah. especially in this culture. In this culture. And she was a product of that culture, right. our culture. Right. And she was a product of a very, you know, famous family. Mm-hmm. And so she probably felt a lot of pressure. I don't know, maybe, who knows? Who knows? It's hard to say. Um, mm-hmm. you know, had she lived or had she taken a different right. path, who knows? I want to just go back for a second because it's something that's intrigued me from the very start. And I've told mm-hmm. you, I told you, you have to write this book. And, mm-hmm. and, and I really feel like it's a vocation for you. I think mm-hmm. we, we all agree on that. But there are these parallels between mm-hmm. your life and her life or you something that was so intensely mm-hmm. relatable for you when you first laid eyes upon her, first heard those, you know, echoes of her voice, right? Mm -hmm. So what is it about Italy that's calling you now? Mm. Yeah, Italy always calls me, (laughs) you know, (laughs) um, that certainly hasn't changed. But now there are a few things. One, um, Giuseppe, who is crucial to the story, is in his early 70s. And I feel the urgency of time of yeah. recording, of course, her her narrative. Um, so that's huge. But this is an interesting moment in time. And Italy, it's almost like the second Renaissance. Yeah. Um, Post plague, we could even say. Mm-hmm. And and I feel that um, more than ever, you know, for so many reasons, not least of which, is the rise of chat GDP and all of this but seriously like we need to go back to art and humanism and being driven by something intrinsic and yeah. this fiery passion to create um, and and I don't want to let that go and I just feel Italy is is endlessly inspiring it's a place where you see beauty around you mm-hmm. um, and I think too you know 
I've been writing Francesca's story for almost 10 years now. Wow. For me, it's it, like it's time to. <laughs> it's time <laughs> to yeah. finish it. Yeah. Um, I think I, I don't know if I could have finished it when I was younger because I just didn't fully understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's actually a really important point, and there are two things that I wanted to address. One is the is the question of maturity, mm-hmm. sort of how you evolve, right? As a as a person, as an artist, as a creative individual, mm-hmm. and you know, how things change um, as you sort of, and I think also the last couple of years have been yeah. really hard. Yeah. Um, I think they've just been really hard. Um, and then, so that's that's one thing that, that interests me, like how you see your art maturing. And the other thing that interests me as a writer and mm-hmm. as someone who, um, you know, has had serious writer's walk since <laughs> I got to the U.S., you know, yeah. a month and a half ago, why do you, why why do you want I mean not why do you want to write this book in Italy but mm-hmm. I think it's more like why does this book need to be written in Italy in mm-hmm. addition to sort of the ongoing narrative that you need to have for example the conversations mm-hmm. you need to have with with Giuseppe with people who are in her daily life and stuff but what what else is going on there um, from the point of view of your art um, what do you hope um, mm-hmm. Italy will will give and it, you know what it's it's going to be that final push right mm-hmm. to be able to finish the book but what is it about Italy that will enable you to do that mm-hmm. yeah I'll say just a quick word about the maturity and then it'll tie into Italy mm-hmm. so when I was first learning about Francesca researching her and writing about her it was from it was much more about me actually yeah. because you know a lot of her contemporaries in Italy I was very similar to her and they created this kind of narrative around you know they would look at me and say you look like her you really do look like her I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to embarrass you but I was looking at her and you really do resemble her you resemble each other in some ways yeah yeah. and and they would say oh and the way you lean over and look at the photos and they created a a lot of these parallels and I don't think I could hold it at that time in some ways I I was like all too eager to take on that identity of course like she's incredible um I've learned to, you know, really separate that, to grow into my own identity as a writer. I'm, yeah. I'm, I love photography, but I'm really not a photographer. And so that's been really helpful with time. Um, and my, I could say a lot else about that, but I'll leave it there. But about um, Italy, I think, um, again, in all the work that's been done about Francesca, that focus on the Italian influence is, is, I won't say missing because there's some, but what there is, there's one amazing book. It hasn't even been translated into English and it's still much more of an art mm. criticism. It's called Francesca Woodman Tra Pelle e Pellicola, mm. which is a great play on words if you know Italian. Um, well, obviously you do. But, um, it's Francesca Woodman through skin and film. Right. Um, and so, again, but that's not available to most readers. Mm-hmm. And so Italy is the lens that differentiates, I think, this book, this story from other work right. out there about mm-hmm. her. Um, and I do think the truth that I'm seeking is there. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> I think so too, and I think yeah. this is a this is the key, and I um I th- I think it's a perfect way for us to end mm-hmm. this conversation today because mm-hmm. um, from that first moment we spoke, it was it was clear to me that mm-hmm. you needed to to get I needed to help you get to Italy, mm-hmm. in, you know, in any way I possibly could um, to to tell this story, and I I really do believe that you are going to find mm-hmm. the answer there, and it might just be. Because you have to be there, you mm-hmm. know, and, and walking, literally walking through her footsteps. But at this, with this new lens you have also mm-hmm. in terms of your, where you are in your life right. and in your art. Right. Um, and where also the way the world, you know, mm-hmm. is going or the way it feels right now, maybe to be able to, to go back in time mm-hmm. and reconstruct something um, and give, give Francesca finally mm-hmm. 
the voice that, you know, we haven't heard, right. you know, that love that she had for Italy right. and, and the way Italy formed her, mm-hmm. um, very much the same way it, it formed you, right? Yes, exactly. And yeah, just to close, um, after Francesca studied in Italy, she never returned. Um, she always wanted to. Mm-hmm. She wrote about it in letters. I have all these letters from her. she sent to her Italian friends. Um, but she didn't go back before her death. And so, you know, there's that sense of longing she has, and I have. Yeah. And it's important to return and give her back her time in Italy. Yay. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy that you joined me today. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm so happy we were able to talk about Francesca here mm-hmm. in New York. And I can't wait to, um, to talk about her again when you're mm-hmm. finally in Italy. <laughs> and maybe we'll talk about her in Antella or something mm-hmm. or somewhere. Actually, you know what we should do? We should mm-hmm. um, meet in Rome with Giuseppe. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'll do, Good we could do, him. yeah, we could do a podcast episode with him in Rome. That, that would be fun. I'm taking Ask, um, I'm taking Ask Fosca and 15 with Fosca on the road, evidently. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. Grazie mille. And mm-hmm. a huge thanks to Amy Love Tommaso for joining me today at 15 with Fosca and I am grateful to all of you for um, continuing to listen and I hope you'll continue to do so. Grazie mille. Alla prossima. Ciao. Grazie. This is As Fosca, your U.S. insider in Italy, signing off for now. Thank you for listening and I hope you'll continue to join in on our conversations. Please also check out my website, asfosca.com and follow me at As Fosca on social media for updates, news, advice, and upcoming podcast. I would also love to hear directly from you. So DM or email me your topic suggestions for future 15 with Fosca podcasts. Grazie mille e alla prossima volta. Ciao ciao.